Hello everyone, welcome back to the Genomics Bootcamp. In this video, we will return to the much appreciated topic of the FST computations. Much appreciated on this channel at least. Well, we will use R and certain R packages for this. And uh, you will see it's fairly easy to do so for any number of reads. So basically what we are going to do, we will compute a basically a matrix of FST values between a number of reads. Then we will visualize them in a phylogenetry or something that is resembles a phylogenetry and there will be multiple options. And at the end, even I will show you how to compute confidence intervals for these FSTs. So if you need to do something like this, this is the few minutes video to watch. So what are we going to need? So, well, we have the tidyverse as usual. And uh, in this case, we need the ape, stamp, and other Gannett packages. Well, obviously, if you don't have them, you need to install them first. So this is how you do that. So basically, there are these install packages, and you give the name, dependencies equals true. You run it, and basically, it installs the packages. Obviously, you need to run these install lines just once. Uh, I have already done that, so I have them commented out. Well, and then you also, of course, you need to load them with the library R command. And now we will use the adaptmap goat genotypes. So there are uh, thousands of individuals and hundreds of breeds. So I went forward and just selected few breeds. So basically this is the Sun and the Togenburg, the Rangeland and the Teddy breed. So the first two being dairy and the second two being meat focused breeds. But uh, of course you can do it with any number of breeds. So this is just to have a few breeds in the matrix and also to ensure that the computations for this example doesn't take too long. So in this case, I went forward, I selected these four breeds and wrote them out in a separate file, which is the, for me, is the selected reads.txt, which is then used with the keep thumb statement of Plink, so that I, I keep only these animals, or animals only from these four breeds in my data set. Also, we do a basic quality control where we keep only SNPs and only animals that have their missingness rate below 10%. Now, what is interesting here, or well, somewhat important, so that we the output file need to be in genotype coding. This with Plink is also very easy to do. So we just use a dash dash recode A option here. So dash dash recode space A here. So this is important to have. So we run this part and see what we get. So the data extraction and quality control is ready. So you see that the AdaptMap dataset is very large with over 50,000 SNPs and uh, well over 4,600 uh, individuals. So well, we don't need that many. So for our purposes, we have just under 50,000 SNPs and uh, somehow exactly 300 samples from these four reads. So now our task is to do basically an FST computations between all of these. Here you see that our output file is uh, after this record A statement in Plink is the .row file. So the after QC is the output file name I gave. So the after QC.row file is the one that we are after. So after we have done our data preparation with Plink, we follow up with the R packages we just loaded, and this would be then the Adeganet and the stamp packages that are very convenient to use for this occasion. So first we convert to the so-called GenLite format with, well, one of the packages, I believe this is the Adeganet. So basically what we use just that uh, the read.plink option, which is very conveniently shaped that basically we just specify the 
file name, so this after qc.row, which produces the so-called genlight format. And this genlight format then we load to stamp with the stamp convert option. So here, basically, well, this is the pop to genlight is basically the file that we have created before. And we just specify that it's a genlight format. And then we have the so-called code breed data set now, which is ready to be analyzed. So before going further, we run these two lines and it is already done. Well, I have to note here that of course the run times of any of these uh, computations will depend on the amount of data you have. So this data of these, uh, well, 50K SNPs and about or well, exactly 300 animals takes a few minutes for me. Well, this was about, uh, you know, 30 seconds for me, but also then the, the follow-up will be a bit longer. But of course, if you have more animals, then it takes longer. So I would advise to when you're starting or when you are doing your first test run, so just select a few breeds and well, maybe a few hundred animals to test. And then uh, especially if you need to do more breeds, then just after you have done the test run and ensure that everything worked, then you run the full thing. So, and we arrived to the star line of our video here. This is a line 40 where we compute this FST matrix. And uh, well, <laughs> it is really, really easy to do. Basically, uh, we just say stamp FST, which is basically the name of the R function from the stamp package. We specify the input file. So this is the code read because this is the stamp import, import the stamp file that we have created. So this is the code read and then some numbers here. Well, what these numbers mean? Of course, you can open the help file. So this is then uh, kind of shows here. So basically the boot, the first number is the number of bootstrap samples. The second one is the percentage to calculate the confidence interval around, and then the end clusters is number of pro processor threads or cores to be used in the calculation. So if you are doing it in this larger, on a larger computer, you can specify more clusters or more processors. And also we can do confidence intervals. Right now we have it at one because if you just scroll down a little bit, so here it says if uh, this N boots, so the number of boots samples is less than two, then no bootstrapping is performed and therefore only the matrix of FST values is returned. So this is what we want at the first step. So we have it like this uh, and well, run it. So this is the step that takes, well, a few minutes to complete. Uh, for me, it took, uh, I don't know, two, three minutes to do so, but uh, well, it finished uh, successfully. So if you then open this gold read.fst data set or just run it like me, then you have basically the FST matrix between the breeds. So this is the rangeland, the Sun and Teddy and Togenborg, and you can see basically the FST values between them. And you see also that, well, some of these FSTs are well closer between some breeds. Some of them are quite far, to be honest. Well, the, the point 18, for example, in between Teddy and Togenborg is really, really large. So, but uh, so there you have these, all these pairwise combinations. So if this was your goal, you already reached the goal. But you can do, of course, better because you can also visualize these, these values in a very nice way in uh, phylogeny trees. So this is coming in the next part. So we basically well, have these, uh, this one line with this uh, neighbor joining trees and then with the NJ uh, option here. And then if you do this and you can run it with the first step, kind of loading the distances from FSTs. And then the second one is then you plot and you have a really nice, well, somewhat basic, but still neat phylogeny tree or basically a tree of distances visualized in, a, in this very neat plot. Of course, you can do, of course, better with the 
plot philo option here. Here I also bring up the help file for the plot philo package, or well, it's not a package, but it's it's an R function. And you see that there is a lot of options here for these labels, the nodes, the edges. So basically these lines or, or the, the, the nodes are the, the endpoints of the of the lines and all this kind of stuff here. So you can play around and see what each thing does. So I went ahead and uh, just to show you a few things. So what I did is just I, I colored the tips uh, of these lines with a different color and made them a bit bigger. And uh, yeah, so just made them a bit larger in general because it's always to ha good to have things larger, more visible. So you see that there is, well, this is what we got. But of course, you can go ahead and, and change many other options. Now, also, there is a neat possibility to have a different type of these trees. So this is, you can you can reach just by specifying the type. So this philogram is the default one, but if there is this cladogram, which is looks like this. So if this is the one that you prefer for some reason, of course, you can go forward. So there is this uh, fan type, uh, well, here it's a bit, uh, we need to specify something else because it's somehow out of the bounds here, but you see the general idea. There is the unrooted tree, there is the radial tree and the so-called tidy tree. So, well, there are options, as I mentioned, there are also a bunch of other coloring options and visualizing options that you can play with. So this would be for the visualization. And uh, then uh, what I told you at the beginning that there is also a possibility to co compute confidence intervals for these FSTs. And, and also I mentioned already in these videos that there is at some point, there are the number of bootstrap samples that you can specify. And well, this is the one thing that you need to change. Well, uh, if you do so, please do me a favor and and, do it with a, a larger number of boot samples. I will use 10 iterations here just to, you know, to be somewhat quick in this, in this uh, demonstration. But just please note that the default is set to 100. So if you do anything with these bootstrap samples for other than plainly experimental purposes in terms of trying out, so if you want to actually use these results, please, choose at least 100 yeah so this this is this would be the minimum uh, i would i would use so of course if you want to try it out as me uh, here so of course you can do a bit less so it, it runs quicker but uh, well if you want to use the the results then use at least 100 so what we need to do to compute confidence intervals so nothing else than change this first number or the number of bootstrap samples in this uh, FSD computation. So we go back here and uh, for my purposes for this demonstration, I change it to 10 and run it. Of course, the runtime for in particular for these bootstrap samples will also depend on the size of the data set you have, the number of reads. So this already finished for me. So at the end, it was not so tragic. It was uh, basically a few minutes. And uh, basically we have this number of bootstrap set to 10. And uh, if we run this, or basically we visualize the, the output. So you see now there is not a matrix as before, but a bit more information. So basically there are well, actually there is also the, the matrix here. Then uh, actually we get the p-values as well. So, well, there are a bunch of zeros here. So what I, I believe this must be something that they are very significant uh, because, well, there is, it just should be very close to zero. And then there are the number of bootstraps for each uh, population pair. So, well, basically there are the, the 10 iterations that we've, specified and based on this uh, well it was also the 95 percent confidence interval what we wanted to compute so this is the lower bound of the 
confidence interval limit for each of these is specified in this column, the upper bound in this uh, other column. So basically what you can get or what you get also with this computation is the confidence intervals, 95% confidence intervals for these FSTs, P values and the FSTs themselves for each breed combination for this data set you have specified. So I will end it here. I think this is a very neat application and a very neat use of genomic data and basically the combination of genomic data and R packages. Both the STEMP and the Adagenet packages are much larger than this. They have many other functions and possibilities and we might return to them in the future. But for this video, I stop it here. I hope you liked it. And for this occasion, for me, remains nothing else but to thank you for your time and wish you a really nice day.